Hey, welcome back to Team Builders. What if I told you the person we're gonna unpack today and understand got in the real estate business in 2006, timing is everything, became a real estate owner by 2007, interesting choice, built that business up, eventually left it in 2015, started his own deal and grew from a SEAL team to one of the biggest teamages in the country. Steve, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me, Tom. I'm super pumped to have you. So obviously we've known each other for going on six, seven years. You have had extraordinary growth, um, but I was doing some research on you. I thought what was interesting is like your double major in biology and economics. Yeah. So it just makes sense to go into real estate because biology and real estate, Steve, help me understand that. So I think, um, you know, immigrant family, which teaches you, you got to hustle. Right. Um, but uh, the doctor road was the road I was going down. I assumed. I mean, who else is doing yeah. biology, right? <laughs> right. So uh, what happened? Like where in college did you finally go? Maybe I don't want to do this. Um, when you have, uh, I played soccer, mm -hmm. right? So we're doing practice every day. Then I got labs and I just burned myself out. So yeah. I said, hey, before I go back to med school, let's just do some consulting gigs. So I got into yeah. consulting did a little bit of uh, work with uh, Accenture, mm -hmm. um, had some fun, started making some money, and that actually got me into real estate. How, well, that sounds more the, you know, the econ, right? Because they're like, okay, we want those smart kids to understand you know, the numbers in the world markets and all that stuff. Yep. How did biology help you through all that? I think um, the determination, like there was just the labs would go on for right. hours and hours. And right. so just a lot of practice and uh, a lot of teamwork actually in, the, yes. in those labs of like one guy might know how to take apart the frog a, a different way and he's helping you to learn how you can do it better. So right. it, was, it was interesting when you look back at college and, and I'm in this interesting space with college and whether it's the right thing to do, yeah. there are so many little lessons through four years that you just don't realize how much they can help you uh, later in life. It, you know, having not gone to college, but watching both my boys go through college and you know, when, like, I don't know if I wanna go to college anymore. I'm like, hey, this may be the only time in your life where you can screw around as much as you do right? Have a ton of fun. Please don't, you know, hurt yourself or anybody else yep. and then get your degree and move on. Right. So I, I, I also have mixed emotions because I think anybody that has taken on that student debt, that is a horrific, horrific amount of debt to get a underwater basket weaving <laughs> degree that gets you absolutely nowhere. Right. So, right. so I agree with you, but let's, let's talk about Accenture to real estate. Yep. So you're out doing consulting. At what point did you say to yourself, you know, this consulting is pretty good, you know, Monday through Friday, probably benefits, you know, public traded company. I'm gonna go sell real estate in 2006. What what were you thinking? So making some really, really good money at, a, at an early age. And um, my uh, now wife uh, said, hey, it's, you can actually go on a vacation, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so we went to Jamaica and I, uh, I bought a book on uh, on sales because um, I had started investing in some real estate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, this sounds like a lot of fun. And I, I don't love going to the office every day and being stuck locked in a room from you know nine to five or nine to nine. Whatever, yeah. And so I turned to her and I said, I think I'm gonna go back and quit. And she said, okay. You know, and so, you know, super supportive wife um, for the whole journey. Um, yeah. And so I did that and I knew they would have always taken me back. So it wasn't as big of a risk. I had no kids, no real debt at the time, a little bit of college, but um, yeah, so it wasn't a huge risk. And then I just loved sales. You know, I, I got out, yeah. I uh, had a first uh, year in sales that was um, remarkable. I had a lot, a lot of fun, made a lot of money doing that. I'm like, this is way better than consulting. Okay, and then the global economic meltdown hit. So that was like a short window of like, wee, yeah. and then bang. <laughs> yeah. but, but your broker came to you, to unpack yeah. that story. Tell people, like we're gonna, we're gonna get into sure. a lot of the sausage making of what he does at an extraordinary level with 120 salespeople and 1500 transactions this year. Like he's built a machine, but you gotta have context for the backstory to understand how he got here. Yeah. So what happened in 2007? So um, basically I said, hey, if I'm gonna do this real estate <clears throat> thing, I'm gonna go all in like I did with everything. So I mm -hmm. went to you know the NAR conference, I went to every right. conference, I read every book, right. I bought. Right all the different, um, you know, little coaching platforms, you know, $500. Right. right. And Training put it into play. Yeah. yeah. Put yeah. it in all into play. And, um, you know, the broker kind of came to me and said, hey, can you teach other people how to do whatever you just did in that first year? And I said, right. yeah, no problem. Isn't that great when the broker's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you figured out. So yeah, great real estate mind, but yeah. systems and process weren't his thing. So sure. he said, hey, you know, I've got this opportunity. We can grow uh, this, this brand and let's partner up. So we did. Yeah. So you become a broker owner. At this point, how old are you? 25. Right, so now you're a co-owner. 
Did you, did you know that the global economic meltdown was yeah. happening when you were like, we, sure, I'll take on we, half the responsibility financially for everything? Yeah, we closed like April of 2007 on, on the deal where yeah. we bought these uh, other offices. And uh, yeah, by 2008, everything, the world's spinning. Did you guys buy at the high? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The worst possible time. And, you know, I had never failed at anything up to that point, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm like, we're, we're, this ship's not going down. And so it was just all hands yeah. on deck yeah. and, and yeah. we made it through some, some tough years. Yeah. Looking back though, um, what did you get from that experience? I think what I learned from that. Actually, let me, who did you become because of that experience? Um, I think I became a, it, look, I, I had a college education, smart mm -hmm. kid, mm -hmm. um, but books weren't really my thing. Yeah. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to have to start to educate myself on, on being an owner, being a leader mm -hmm. uh, in these times. So I really started to dive into books at that time. Yeah. And so uh, learners are earners for sure. And to this day, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big Blinkist fan, so I, I try and get stuff through a, a yep. little quicker today, yep. but yep. always just trying to take in information. Yeah. Yeah. What does information do for you? Like when, you, like I mean, you and I are very. I mean, this yep. morning I'm 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 actually re-listening to this audio book. <laughs> I'm going back through this one. I'm obsessed with this book. Um, <clears throat> but I do. I listen to short form, long form, and then I do. If I'm listening to the book, I listen to it like 1.75. So I'm getting it really fast. Totally love uh, going at, at higher speeds. And I guess what I've learned is you you pick up different things at different points in, in, in your life, Bingo. right? You, you could read a book at 25 and read that book at 35 and it hits you totally different. So yeah. it's just, you gotta constantly dive in into this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's transition. It's all of a sudden it's 2014 and something happens where you say, I think I'm going solo. Yeah. What, if, what happened? I think my partner and I were just going in different directions. Mm -hmm. um, he was a great mentor, uh, a great real estate mind, and you know, just at different phases in our life, 20 years apart, mm -hmm. um, I kind of wanted to go uh, in a different direction. And so we just came to an agreement and um, a, a very fair one for both of us where he still let me practice right in the same market, you great. know? And uh, I was uh, gonna go build a SEAL team. So we're gonna talk about the biggest mistakes that we see team ridges, team leaders, brokers make when it comes to recruiting, onboarding, and retention. Because you've done some it, some battle tested sure. proof of like, hey, this works, right? Because we've made a lot of the mistakes. But but go back to that early days. So you you know you're coming off having a, a large company, yep, probably lots of agents, lots of resources, and you're like, I'm going to start small, three people in a dusty uh, three family. Yeah. And, and and you started your own brokerage out of the gate. Yeah, right why'd out of the you, gate. Why'd you do that versus just, you know, just hang your license someplace else and not deal with the nonsense? So I had a franchise and I just felt like, uh, you know, that was the first eight years of, of my ownership. And mm -hmm. I felt like we were just <clears throat> handing them money that yeah. they we weren't getting um, a return. So I sure. said, you know what, with that money, I can take it and market. Got it. Uh, and so, yeah. So um, funny start. I um, I started uh, with one name and uh, managed to get myself into a, uh, a lawsuit within a couple of months on, what, on name. What happened? Yeah. So it was a situation where somebody, uh, we did the research. Um, I don't feel like they would have won if they took me to uh, all mm -hmm. the way in, in court. Sure. But it was just, I was going between one name and using my name, which is a tongue, twi tongue yeah. twister. Yes. Rovith, this is, yes. is, is I, a tough one. I had to say it like seven times. Like, Steve, you know, I've loved you for a long time. But like, <laughs> I got yes so you know i just felt like when i got the demand letter um to stop using the original name because I, I decided not to go with my name yeah and uh, yeah. i said you know what this is a sign let's just go with my name my name um i had another family member who, who was pretty successful in our, in our marketplace so yeah. the name carried some weight yeah so but it's a full rebrand after you just bought all the signs and the business cards and right yeah right you know, it's interesting that stuff happens in business and, and I'm glad you brought it up because, you know, sometimes we just, we think we've got the right idea, but we don't do the research. We don't go to the government files. Yeah. We don't call our attorney and say, could you check this out? And yeah. then all of a sudden you're 25,000, $50,000 into branding and you're like, oh, I guess we can't use that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I've, we, I've been guilty of that one. Blessing in disguise though. <laughs> Always. Best thing that could have happened. So when did, when did you get connected with your first coach with us? Uh, just right when I started. 
Yeah, it, so I mean, early. Yeah. So why? I mean, you were a smart guy. You got a lot of things. I mean, you, you, you're Referral obviously time. very successful. Referral. Okay. Um, you know, we talked about it earlier. I had bought every training platform known yeah. to man. Yeah. I probably spent $5,000 on coaching. Yeah. And somebody said, hey, there's this Tom Ferry guy you got to listen to. Yeah. And I said, I'm not doing another coach, man. I, yeah. I, I know it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Come on, man. I'm 33. I got <laughs> yeah, this. I got this. <laughs> I bought all the coaches stuff. Yeah. What's he going to tell right. me? Um, went to an event and uh, it was life changing event. So what was the event? Um, I think I went to a sales edge. Yeah, that was my first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Experience and I'm like, whoa, nobody's done it like this. Yeah, yeah. So like learn what to say, be effective. Yeah, right? yeah. And I hadn't also given a consistent coach. I had bought people's. <clears throat> You know, everybody kind of had a book or you're, some you're program. Doing, you're doing training. Yeah, self-training. Right? Not like, yeah, coaching. training and coaching, very different. You know, yes. you've learned that now because now you obviously have all these team leaders and they're coaching and training, right? So, Correct. Um, all right. So we were, we were chatting sort of off camera. You, like a few people that, you know, the, the sort of circle that we run in yep. went like this. I'm going to start small or have 200 people and take over the world. Like, right. But that was a transition to go from three. Like, walk us through the evolution. If you, if you just said yep. from... 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Help us understand like, you know, the, the building blocks. What did you add first? How many people? Let's yep. just kind of go nitty gritty deep on that for a sec. Sure. I, I really like, and this was from, from my coach, um, we did a three-step approach to get me out of production. Okay. Okay, but now you're going super advanced when you're already talking getting out of production. Okay. Weren't you producing in 15, 16, 17, or did yeah. you jump right out of production? Right out of, I would say by 16, I, uh, well, so, so 15 is yeah. sell as many houses as you can, man. Oh my God, I just started my own company. I got to right. make some money. <laughs> yeah, bring right. in the revenue, right? Yeah. Bring in the revenue. So sell, sell, sell. <laughs> yep. um, I brought uh, one, eight, or two agents with me and, a, and, a, and an admin. Mm -hmm. um, neither one of them were, you know, top producing agents, it was, hey, let's do this as a team, Yeah. right? So yeah, I don't know what we sold that first year, maybe 7,500 houses or something, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, all in. But as I'm, as I'm working through that and working with the coach to go, okay, first step of building this is let's get you off of buyers, mm -hmm. right? And I, I love this three-step program yep. for anybody looking to build a team. Yep. No more buyers. What about my best friend? No yep. more buyers, right? right? So right. get yourself a buyer's <clears throat> agent. Um, mm -hmm. so, so did that. Um, so in, in year two, I think we probably double that business. So maybe right. we do, you know, I don't know, 150, 200 transactions, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, at the same time we're getting buyer's agent, we're getting, um, a executive assistant slash mm -hmm. transaction coordinator. Yep. Yep. So start to get the admin support. Um, then year, th year three is no, uh, uh, no more listings. Right, so that, that you just had a whole bunch of people go. Oh, yeah, oh, that's where all the money is, Steve. How did you? Oh, right. So, so at what point? It it in twenty seventeen, how big is the team? You, 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 Lisa. So many of our friends doubled, 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 doubled transaction and volume year over year, and it was in my mind <clears throat> combination of adding, but also replacing. Like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore, so I'm going to put three people over there. And their combined effectiveness is a little better than what I used to do on my own. But now I'm free yeah. to go do all this other stuff. Was that the strategy? Yeah, absolutely. And, and like Lisa, you know, we, we built and then we also tore it down of and course. rebuilt it. Of course, yeah. of course. What about along the way here? When someone hears, okay, so he added a couple people and he was able to double his production, right? Like, I think one of the elements is, okay, so what lead pillars did you add? What new uh, revenue sources did you add? Like, you know, could you, you could only squeeze your past clients and centers of influence <laughs> right. so much before they're like, okay, Steve's calling. He probably wants a referral. Okay, got it. Yes. So what else did you add 15, 16, 17, 18 along the way like, as a lead source? Yeah. So 100% and, and I struggled with the growth, right? Mm -hmm. When I would come to some of your events and we got to go bigger and bigger and bigger, I always, you know, wanted to make sure if we were going to bring an agent on the team that we could feed them. Right. And so, you know, lead gen became a really important thing for us. Um, and it, there's a great evolution in the lead gen, which hopefully we'll get into. But so I think we just start with um, Google pay per click and, and Facebook leads. Yep. Right. Um, because those are cheap. I love that. So we and we, Google we, today. Yeah. We literally just coming out of a Miami meeting and people are like, Oh, I'm I'm thirty thousand dollars on this portal, and I've got you know fifteen thousand on this portal. I'm like, how much you spend on Google? Five hundred dollars a month, and I'm like, oh, and what kind of response and returns you get? Yeah. 
oh, I made 180,000. You you put 6,000 <laughs> in and you made 180,000. Maybe you should go to $50,000 a year. You know what I mean? Like people miss that one. They so, do. Yeah. So Google was effective, Facebook yep. was effective. But now how many salespeople do you have in 2018? So by 2018, I, my guess is we're probably like 18 to 20 sales agents. That's a lot of agents. Yeah. But not for someone like you that had 120 yeah, in your the franchise. Yeah, the agent count wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, and, and before I really wanted to scale this, I really wanted to get into the weeds and build out the systems and the process, you know? Yeah, so, so talk talk about that as we, before we get into 19, 20, 21, where the this explosive growth. What are the most important things you had to put in place that gives, and I'm, I'm saying this to the people listening, it gives the owner, the agents, the TC, it gives everybody the certainty that we can do more when the flywheel's working, right? But when there's a cog in the wheel and something breaks down, everybody yeah. gets a little freaked out. I mean, I think the number one thing that you've got to get off of an agent's plate is, is any kind of paperwork, yeah. right? So the, the transaction coordinator has to be the first thing because that's the last thing that you want your agents doing is right. doing paperwork. Doing, right. you know, following a transaction from beginning to end, mm -hmm. you want them out talking to people, right. right? So anything that we can get off of off of an agent's plate, and then it was any back end op stuff that I could get off of my plate. Those are the two, you know, most important things in, in my mind is free up my time, mm -hmm. right? Always trying to replace myself, right. whatever role I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was always like, how do you know well, what to take off of your plate? And and the best advice I ever got, um, possibly from the coach here, was put in, in order everything that you do on a daily basis yep. and then prioritize what do you actually like to do, yeah. right? So the stuff that you like to do, don't replace that stuff. The stuff right. that's at the bottom of the list, find somebody to do it. Bingo, bingo, you know? bingo. So. I've seen, I mean, so many of our clients, like, what did you do? I made up a list of all the stuff that I love to do that creates revenue and all the things I felt like I had to do. And if I just got rid of that yeah. list to somebody yeah. else, they could do it way more effective, probably gonna do it with a bigger smile on their face, more enthusiasm, they're gonna, they're gonna love it, where we're like, I have to do this. So, so TCs- I wanna, I wanna highlight that, Tom. Yeah, please. When I first got into this, replace myself, my mentality was get them to do it at 80% of me, right? Because I thought nobody could do it better than Steve, yeah. right? Yeah. And what 80%, I've learned, 80 percent is a tall order. <laughs> yeah. What I've learned though, and you just hit on it, is most of these people do it better than I ever could have because right. we've got the right person for that. I'm trying right. to be jack of all trades. You put the right person in that role, yeah. they're doing it at 110% of what. So do I you, think people got to get comfortable with people can do it better than you at pretty much everything that you do. Right, right. How, okay, so let's, let's unpack that. Um, I know as a CEO, like you don't want me doing the accounting. You don't want me doing HR. You don't really want me doing anything except for coaching, creating, connecting, contributing, if you're really paying attention to my skill set, But I also understand I've got an ego. I've got an opinion. I think I can save that client. I think I can save that deal. I think I can market that better. I certainly have an opinion on everything. How do we get out of that or, or do we? I struggle with it every day. Right, yeah. okay, so I'm yeah. not alone in this. Yeah, yeah. you know what, I've got a great um, supportive executive team that um, just reminds me occasionally, a yeah. nice little nudge of, yeah. can you get out of our way, please? Right. You know, and what's working for us right now is a list. So if I go to a conference, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I used to just come back, especially from yours, because right. it was R&D, rip yeah. off and duplicate. Yeah, that's right. I'd come back with 100 things and go, all right, we're doing it all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was bad. Right. It was really bad. They're like, please, Steve, no more Tom Ferry yeah. conferences, yeah. please. Yeah, he clearly just got back from a Tom Friends, uh, conference. Yeah. Everybody hide. Oh, it was a Tom Friends. I <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so so, now we just dump it in a list, <clears throat> right. right? And we go, at what pace can you guys get this done? This would be a priority right. for me. What's a priority right. for you guys? Yep. And just get on the same page of what can we really accomplish in the next week, month, quarter and what's got to wait that you that's exactly it it's like what can we do this week that we think is urgent that will make a difference that will either solve an immediate problem or it'll create revenue or solve we want more listings send yeah. out that mailer everyone in, in tom's community is saying it's working right now okay let's get that out versus can we add this into our next quarterly meeting and see where it fits yeah what what time what resources what people what yep. might have to stop happening if we're going to add this one in? and you start thinking about your business that way at your size we have to otherwise were the disruptors yeah. of the business. And, and the, the waterfall is, 
So we're getting it right at the executive level, but now we're working on how, when we make a change to the organization, how do we roll that out? Yeah. Because even there, we're, we're trying to roll stuff out too fast. You know, right. with, with the size that we're at, we gotta yeah. take some time and, right. hey, here is our process for change rollout. Yeah. So we're working on that. So, so if we were to fast forward to today, and because I really wanna get into this sort of mistakes around recruiting and onboarding, and onboarding specifically, because I think you just got a, for the person listening, whether you're gonna onboard one salesperson or 400 salespeople, what Steve is doing with his team is on point. But first, give people context. So today we have 120 salespeople, yep. four locations. Four regions, yep. Okay, so four regions. Yep. And and give us the just the management structure of a region. Sure. So within those regions, you've got your team leader. So just okay. think of each region like a anybody who's running a team. Mm -hmm. You've got a team leader. Yep. Um, but here's where it gets a little bit different. We have a full-time coach. I love it. Right. So that person is out of production. Yep. And they're there to support the agents. Is in that any like, way. A, like a sales manager, deal, doctor? But we call it coach because coach is way sexier. Yep. Yeah. They, they, um, they run the script calls for that region. Yep. Um, they will help the, the, the sales leader, maybe with some accountability. If an agent is struggling, maybe they can pull somebody aside and, mm -hmm. and help them on something specific. Good. Um, they run the trainings in that region, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then they are taking over after the first um, six transactions, I believe it is. So under that coach, if, you're, if you've done less than six transactions, you have a mentor. And that person is hand-holding you through those first six deals. So mentor on first six deals. Yep. I mean, this is a very classic real estate brokerage play, but you're doing it in a teamerage That's environment, it. right? So I love it. So, so what would like a typical team leader earn versus a coach earn versus a mentor earn? So I think you're gonna go, it's gonna be depending on the size of these teams, right? So right. the way that we've done like uh, each of these roles was they were all in production at first, yep. right? So yep. our, our sales leaders, um, we're trying to get to about 50, 60 agents per region where mm -hmm. we, then we believe that those sales leaders can come out. But right now they are leading their region team leader and just like a typical team, they're still doing a few deals. Right. We try and keep them on the listing right. side so it's right. a less uh, um, time intensive. Yep. Uh, and our coaches were still in production and but now Good. we pulled them out. So, you know, you should be making, you know, with, cause you're getting overrides, those, those age, uh, the sales leader and the coach mm -hmm. are getting overrides and everybody in your organization. So the bigger it grows, you know, these should be six figure positions. Right, right. And I think the key on these roles too is when we were small, we brought everybody in and everybody's an agent. When you get a little bit bigger, now we can really look and say, hey, you know what? Tom's not the best agent, but man, he really cares. Right. He'd be a great coach. Yeah. He'd be great on those script calls. Um, so, and everybody doesn't make a great leader or a great coach. So mm -hmm. just kind of feel your people out and have a career path for people. Have you, so career pathing is so key. And I think it's, it's when I was going through all of your stuff, I'm like career path, career path, career path. Career, like, like when you give people a future to live into, they live into it with you versus at another at brokerage. A, yes. Um, but let's go back to you. So, so they're comp, they're making good money. How are you identifying them? Like, cause a lot of people will do this. They'll go like, well, you know, I really like Hector over there and Tyrese is awesome. Tyrese, you wanna go into sales management? Sure. And then you never think like, has he ever managed anything ever in his life? Yeah. But you know, he's a really good deal doctor and he's a nice guy and he's the one I'm closest to in the office. So I'll make him the manager. You know what? What's, I, what's I, the right approach? I think the right approach is they start doing the role when they're not getting paid for it. I'm telling you, yeah, some people will just naturally start to do some things and yeah. you're like, wow, they, they've, they've got it. They wanna do it, Yeah. Um, let's compensate them for it. Yeah. And we've had a bunch of different things kind of come out of that. For sure. Yeah, so so look to see what people's tendencies are when they're not getting paid. It's, it's like, who does everybody go to when you're not there? Yeah. Right, like that That might just be your next like junior manager, sales team leader, et cetera. Or, or you know, I think most teams today are using some sort of internal communication, right? Yeah. Who's the person that always responds? Yeah. When, when there's yes. one, one of the agents has a question, the person that always responds probably make a good coach. Yeah. Do you guys use Slack for that? We actually use um, Google. So okay. we're, we're all in workspace, so we use chat. Okay, good, yeah. good. And it's all the same. Yeah. It's just, it's just another form of easy, fast communication. Are you guys, because you're in four regions, yep. so so break, Connecticut, yep. two in Mass, one in Florida? You got it. Where's the Florida? Sarasota. Okay, so Sarasota, two in Mass, like north and south, east and west? Uh, central and west. Okay, central and west, and then where in Connecticut? Hartford. Okay, perfect, right? Yep. So, so tons of opportunity. Yep. Leads being generated in all. Yes. Four team leaders. Yep. 
maybe we need to back up because I want to get into the onboarding and the mistakes because there's so much there's so much there to unpack. Sure. Um, you've got you, you've got a COO, you've got a director of recruiting, you've got a director of agent development, agent development, training basically. What about marketing? Uh, hired outside. Okay. Yep. So we've got a CMO uh, oh, that is outside the media company. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. No, separate. Separate. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Separate. So, okay. and you know, this is a, an interesting thing for people because you're like, well, I can't afford all these people, right? right? Most of these, whether it's COO, CMO, mm -hmm. CFO, you can go fractional now. Yes. I never realized yes. that, right? Yes. So we have full-time COO, but we yeah. have a, a part-time fractional CFO and a fractional CMO. It's perfect. Yeah, so yeah. so look into that if you're like, I can't afford all these people. Right, yep. right. It's no different from like uh, my buddies over at Picasso. Let's let's take a $5 million house, just buy one eighth of it, Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, right? So it's the same thing, take a $250 on our salary, maybe just take one eighth of it, right? Yes. And have somebody there thinking who has all that experience experience working with you. Okay, so let's go back to, um, again, mistakes that you see team leaders and brokers makes, mistakes that you've made, and then let's go through literally your onboarding process in detail. Sure. Because I think people are gonna take a lot of notes right now. Th those that have made the mistakes, myself included, are gonna get a lot of value out of this. So talk to us about, let's just go right into onboarding. Sure. Sure. So I, I think, you know, we've always came, come from the approach that if we're going to give these guys leads, we've got to go heavy on the training. Yeah. Okay. Because I think early on, we had plenty of leads coming in and nobody full-time training. Oh, mm -hmm. just, just put a question in, in chat or just ask, right? Yeah. Instead of front-loading some training. Um, and so, look, it was an expense that I, I originally was like, man, I don't know if I can afford this. Yeah. I don't think you can afford not to spend the money upfront on the training if, yeah. you're, if you're getting leads for your team. Yep. So um, it, it's pretty extensive. So in our training actually starts before they're even a part of our brokerage. Um, so what we realize, at least in, in the areas that we are operating, there's been a delay in- uh, Getting licensed. Getting licensed, oh, yeah, everywhere. Right? Yeah. So we're bringing them into our ecosystem. Um, what does that look like? Access to our script calls. Mm -hmm. um, access to our, we have like a Thursday training, so mm -hmm. you can come in and look at that. Um, we do a, a deep dive two hours on Fridays that you are playing in the CRM. So we're actually doing live dialing with one of our top prospectors. Good. Um, so you can kind of watch them do it. And then we have a 6.30 a.m. call that, that I'm on, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, we might listen to a Tom Ferry show. Mm -hmm. uh, we might do a motivational video, but mm -hmm. then we spend the last 20 minutes or so just deal, what happened yesterday in real estate? Right. And, and right. now, Case when, study, yeah. deal doctoring, you know, it's, education. Yeah, so we might have 30, 40 agents up at, at 6.30 in the morning trying to just get better, you yeah. know? We've got yeah. this mentality, you gotta do at least 100 deals before you, you kind of know what's going on. Right. So how do I get 100 deals worth of knowledge into your head mm -hmm. as fast as possible? So, and again, and this is happening with people that are, maybe they've taken their exam, have they committed to you or is this a part of your- They've gotta commit. Learned, yeah, okay. So They've gotta so, commit to us. So I've taken my exam, I'm I'm committed. Yep. I'm in, but I'm I'm still waiting for my license. And if that takes three months, four months, five months, whatever it is, you're baking them along. Yeah. And look, I mean, the toughest part about starting in real estate is you're not going to get money for 90 days, right? right? So how do we try and get the money as fast as possible? Right. So get them trained up, you know, early at, while they're waiting. Contract training. Um. Not. Pre-license. I think okay. all of that starts once you actually got your license. Got it. Yep. So so walk us through the onboarding experience. So, yeah. so welcome to Roby Homes. Sure. I'm in. So I'll give it to you at, at a high level and yeah. then we can kind of break it yeah. down. So our, our director of agent training really went with this uh, space theme. Okay. Yeah. So we have our entire training platform is called Agent Launch. Okay. Agent so Launch. launch got right? it. Yep. So first part is liftoff, right? Obviously. Yeah, I love it. So, so liftoff is that pre-license scenario mm -hmm. where you can get access to, to some of our training. Start to feel our culture too. Mm -hmm. I think that's the other thing you'll notice about people is how they're interacting on some of these calls. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a feel for who these people are before they're even there and they're getting a feel for who we are. Right. We're not gonna be a great fit for everybody. Yep. So, that, so that's lift off. Um, then you get your license, you're gonna go through uh, orientation, mm -hmm. right? So it's like a one day, make sure all your systems are set up and everything like that. Do you guys do that internally? Is that done by the coach, the mentor, the sales trainer, or? The director of, uh, of training, actually. So it gets that's her first kind of interaction with every agent that comes through our door. And I'm assuming this is remote because you're in three states. Yeah, some of it's uh, right. remote. Some of them are obviously at, at the headquarters that she's at. Okay, so it's like so. tech onboarding. Here's your, you know, here's access to the CRM, yep. training on the CRM. Yep, 
yep, we'll start to give them, well, after orientation, that's usually on a Friday and the following week is what we call boost. Got it. Okay, so that's the, our one week intensive. Okay. Trying to get you on, on all the core stuff that you need to, to do a deal. So, so I'm a big fan of total immersion training and a one week intensive is just that. But most of them don't remember everything. True. So what happens afterwards? They go into orbit. Ah, <laughs> right. Wait, wait, I'm now in outer space yeah. and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm scared. I love it. So we boost you. We give it all. But right. Yeah. You can't. Exactly. You can't retain it all. Yeah. It's you got to learn and do learn and do learn and do. Right. So orbit is a and I don't know how many modules she has built out, but we've got our training uh, uh, learning system. What and LMS do you guys use? Uh, it's actually it doesn't digital, really it doesn't really digital matter. Chalk. It's yeah, not it's, it's not one of the common we, ones. We use no, we use the same thing internally. All oh, our coaches are on it. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Great. Love it. Yep. So she, so that's like a, um, you've got 60 days to basically complete that training. Mm -hmm. And there, and the nice thing about that is we can put some tests in there. Right. So you can't just go through it and yeah. we'll know whether you actually are, uh, uh, you know, learning through, yeah. through these modules. Check marks yeah. along the way, tests. The other thing that we've, we've thrown in, you know, and I think every agency would do this is you got to put your database together right away, right. right? So we used to hand out this document of like a- um, The memory jogger. Yes, the memory yes, jogger. The memory Another jogger. Tom Ferry tool. Yes. So we'd give that out and um, think that, okay, they built the best database possible. Mm -hmm. And agents would, you know, we were looking back at some of our agents. They'd have a 15 person database, 20 person database. So we actually took it off their plate. Um, you spend a few hours with one of our, uh, our virtual assistants mm -hmm. and we built out your database for you. So how do you do that? So the, you're going to give that virtual assistant log into your email, your social media. Um, we're going to get everything out of your phone. We're going to get it into a spreadsheet. Yeah. They're going to get rid of the duplicates for you. You know, really build out your database for you. That is so. Yeah valuable. Oh my God. It's unbelievable. So people are like, I am, I, I just don't know anybody. And right. then also you're like, Oh, you have like 325 people. You actually <laughs> yes. know. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So phone to spreadsheet direct by a VA. Yep. Do you get some pushback from the agents? Like, well, I don't know. I don't want people to have access to all my stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what do you guys say? You're not in the growth mindset then. Yeah. Right. So if you're going to, if you're going to be on this team, you got to come from a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So not only are you giving us access to all that stuff, um, but we're going to communicate for, on, on behalf of the team. It's going to come from you to your database. Yeah. Cause what do we know? Agents won't do it. Right. So let's just do it for them. Well, they're, they're like, you know, all the studies show the first 90 days of any new career, you're completely overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. In this case, you're learning new contracts. You got to learn how to think like a real estate agent. I, yeah. I don't have a paycheck coming in, right? Stress, you have all that stuff going on. And then right. you're like, hey, now get your database organized. Oh, <laughs> right. Right, right. So it goes back to your early thought. Our job is to remove all the obstacles yeah. so they can just go be yeah. with people. And we're like, man, I, I know this isn't right. And so, yeah, yeah. we took a deep dive and, and we build it for them now. So it's Smart. Been great, great change for us. What else happens in orbit? Like, so you got this, you know, days of training, right? Check-ins, like, is it, is it trainings on what to say? Is it training on contracts? Like what, what happens during this time period? All across the board time. I mean, mm -hmm. she has built out just an unbelievable training modules for you name it. We've yeah. got it. Yeah. And anytime, so we, we use Zendesk as our kind of repository. Yeah. Okay. So anytime somebody asks a question and we can't say it's in Zendesk, yeah. we got to build out an article. Right. So, right. you know, so that we train our coaches. If it's not in there, build an article. So we want you to turn to an agent and say, hey, there's an article on this. Go read that. And if you still don't understand it, come back to me. Yeah. Uh, and, th and those are the type of people that we're looking for is those that want to learn. Of course. So, you know, if they're like, oh, can you just tell me the answer? No, I want you to get all of it. Yeah. Right. So yeah, read the information and you know it. But what do you do with it? I mean, we have, what is it like? Uh, you got four minimum modalities of how people get information. Yep. So, so what if I'm not good with reading? I'm better with video or I'm better auditorily. What do you guys do then? So that's her final piece um, to the space theme, which is access. Okay. So access is your core uh, trainings. Mm -hmm. It happens every other week um, and it just is on repeat right. every single quarter. Right. So that's your buyer presentations, mm -hmm. listing presentation, how to run an open house, how mm -hmm. to negotiate offers, right. um, repair requests, stuff yeah. like that. So that, and that's live. Yeah. Uh, or if you're in an, another region, then you zoom in. So, so what's the success rate? We, you know, I talk to brokers all the time and they're like, oh, I've got the best new agent training program on the planet. I'm like, well, what's your success rate? Well, my per person productivity in my company is six. Yeah. I'm like, oh, now they're traditional brokerage, not a lead generation based team ridge, right? So I'm not knocking them because if you get to six and your sales price is 750,000 and you have core services, you're actually making a lot of money. You're not a broker. Um, 
But the failure rate is really high. Really high, yeah. And we're, you know what, we're trying to be a little bit more aggressive um, than we were probably in the past. Um, we were willing to keep some people on if they kind of just fit the culture. Yeah. And now we're trying to say, look, it's not just about culture. Like th these leads are expensive. Um, right. and, I, and I guess at the end of the day, if I give the lead to you, and you don't close it, and I give it to Johnny, and Johnny can close it, it's unfair to Johnny to keep giving you leads. 100%. So like A 100%. players want to be around other A players. Yeah. So we're just trying to level up the bench. We literally just had uh, Chris Marcel from Top Grading at the Miami event yesterday, and, and like the whole theme is A players. <laughs> a yeah. players only. How do you get to A players? So when you said that, that was my big smile. Yeah. So access is that ongoing training. But, but Steve, in the last 24 months, and you could really argue... You could really argue almost the last 48 months, how you represent a buyer today is so different from what it was in 17 or 18, right? It's so intense today. Um, I was looking at the numbers yesterday, it's 348,000 homes for sale right now in the US and we're in April in the spring market when there's typically 1.25 million, yeah. right? And, and interest rates have gone up and, 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 right? So have you guys modified the training at all? Are you doing more? Are you, are you finding with your existing people that are not a part of this onboarding that you've got to do way more sales training around, getting offers accepted, taking more listings? Yeah, it's it's just constantly evolving. And right. I think you know one of the areas that we really struggle is with an experienced agent who maybe hasn't been through a market cycle. And they're like, right. oh, you know. You, and, they're, and they're selling 50 homes a year and killing it and think they're And, the and then we're like, yeah, we need you to go through all this and training. And they're like, no, 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 I, I know all that. Yeah. No, you don't. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah, I mean, we have a full-time person dedicated to making sure our training is the latest and the greatest, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's always evolving. We're always updating articles right um so yeah it's the, the training is a beast yeah i i listen i agree <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i agree so what's the success rate you say zero to six through this then they go from having a mentor to being working with the sales uh the sales team leader and the coach so if you bring in 10 agents yep how fast do they get zero to six and so, how many actually get there? So we're trying to get you a deal in your first 30 days. That's the goal, yeah. right? And now we're, we're doing 30, 60, 90 day reviews. Yeah. So I think we were probably waiting too long to start to hold agents accountable. Yeah. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll notice like if the agent's activities aren't strong in the, you know, by the by day 60, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to have a, hey, are you sure you want to do this conversation? Yeah. You know, because we just haven't seen many people change. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's if, okay. That's a key distinction. If yeah. they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but I think some, we have learned that some people, like you said, learn a different way. Yeah. They might prospect a different way. Right. You know, some people spend more time on the phones, you mm -hmm. know, because, and, and this was a good learning lesson for me, is we used to give leads to everybody across the board equally and then say, call them, call them, mm -hmm. you know, buy or die play, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, yeah. 10 days, buy or die. Um, <laughs> it just, I haven't heard that phrase in a while, but yeah. yes, yeah. But it, it just doesn't work that way for everybody. Yeah. And we've also really started to transition into a um, kind of an appointment team instead of a lead team. So what we're realizing is that the agents, even the best prospectors, they can't nurture the long-term client. Right. So we really don't want to be handing leads. We want to be handing appointments. So we're, yep. we're, we're, you know, the ISA team has become a critical part of, of what we're building. So if, if the if the buyer's not ready to go in the next 90 days, let's put them back into a nurture, right? right? And you go figure out who's your next five that are going to buy something. But this goes back to your, your fundamental philosophy of, I'm going to keep removing things from the agent's responsibility, go on appointments sell houses, yeah. right? Just just do that function, we'll take care of the rest. It's, it's laughable what we were asking agents to do when we first started the team. Yeah. It was it was pretty bad. So so back to the question. So if you bring in 10 yep. new agents, how many, I would assume not all of them. No, four, okay. three, four are okay. gonna make it. Yep. Yeah, you know? So, so but the nice thing about yeah. our system is very rarely do we have to say, hey, you're off. Yeah, they're gonna weed themselves out because we're holding them accountable now. Right. We weren't. We weren't doing a good enough job at the accountability. Yeah. And I think early on, you know, tough conversations are tough conversations. Yeah. And I, I think making our our team leaders understand we've given these agents every opportunity. I really believe that in my yeah. heart. We yes. are giving them the best opportunity, mm -hmm. and it's just the business isn't for everybody. It's right. They they got in. They thought this was something else. Yep. Maybe they saw it on a, one of these television shows. Yep. But the reality is it's a grind. It's yep. every day, right. it's systems, it's process, and the, the most successful are just willing to do the mundane over and over and over. That's it. Look at mic drop. 
Right. But the problem is most people don't like, we literally spent uh, two days in Miami and I keep references just, you know, with a bunch of great clients like Steve and, and it all boiled down to the ones that were able to scale the fastest and retain the growth systems and process. Yeah. It wasn't energy. It wasn't mindset. It wasn't positive. It was just systems and process. I kept adding in what needed to be done to maintain the flywheel to keep it moving, to keep yeah. the whole thing growing. So, so, so let's talk about mistakes you've made. What if, like reflecting back on, cause this is where you guys are at today with this sort of space theme. Yep. What was the single biggest mistake you made early on in your onboarding processes? Training wasn't strong enough for sure. Asking, yeah. you know, I mean, it wasn't as bad as, you know, what I think a lot of brokerage do is like, hey, here's a desk and here's a business card. It wasn't that yeah. bad, but <laughs> yeah. it was nowhere Good near. Good luck, kid, you're on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> here's your desk, here's your phone. Good luck, kid, you're on your own. Yes. Um, underestimating how important um, the language is, you know, so, you know, we listen to all of their calls now. Yeah. Um, and even if you're in script training, you know, what you do live could be different. So right. they get scored on those. So kind of listening to that and making sure they're actually saying the right things. Mm -hmm. um, definitely expecting too much follow-up. Yeah. To, to think that a human being is, is gonna be able to follow up forever with a lead, no chance. No, well, especially when they have so much inbound coming in, yeah, right? It's just very easy to go, the next one will be a, a now buyer, right? right? So right. we're, we're really trying to I'll train get to on, that person later. Yeah, yeah. Tra train on now, just make a connection, yeah. right? It's another human, it's not a lead, it's another human being. Try and make a connection with them and if they're gonna buy in 30 days, 60 days or 90, you keep them. Yeah. If there's something else, let's educate them and help yeah. them for wherever they're gonna be two years from today. Bingo. So let's, let's finish with uh, commission mistakes and where you're at today. Yeah, we, and I wanna just preface everybody. The real estate industry churns at 2% every month. You with me? Like that's a number you can Google. It's, it's fast. It's just meaning like they leave the industry. And then I remind people, everybody's being recruited all the time. You're, we're, we continue to recruit our own yep. to stay with us and keep moving forward, right? And we're recruiting new people into the business every single day. And all of your people right now, as you're watching this, one, one, Tom Tool said recently, if you're going after new agents, 30% of them leave. Yeah. Said just, they, they leave because they, they didn't work out, they couldn't sell a house, or they did really well and they no longer saw the value and they leave. So we have to always be doing this, but one of the solutions is to career path yes. with our commissions. Yep. So, so tell us the, the different models you've done sure. and then tell us the model you're at now. So, you know, we, we started with the, and this is a, a, a tough one because I think a lot of people are on this. I just, yeah. I don't think it's the yeah. right way to go, but we started with, there's a different split on your personal, and there's a different split when the team gives it to you. Right. And, the, and the tracking and all of that was just, it was really, really difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think when we made that decision, um, we're changing, agents are changing, and, and we lost some agents, yeah. you know? But I think, you know, having, there's just one split. Now you can level up on your yeah. split, but yeah. having the, you know, a personal deal versus team deal, I, I think is a mistake. The only, uh, the only sort of good thing I've seen around that model, that there's a few things I've seen, but one in particular is, um, Steve, if they're not in the CRM, they're not in your sphere. Yeah, right. I can so, see that because yep. they're like, you know, they meet him in an open house, and they go, "Well, he became my friend." Yeah, you mean at, you at the open house of the listing that we took, <laughs> right. that we let you go work that the open house. All marketing, Those are, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that's our that's our lead, right? They're right. like, oh, oh, and then in your contracts, a sphere lead is, and everything else is ours. Real definition, yeah. right? Like real, like, and getting them to understand, like, there is a like, we spend a lot of money on marketing and advertising, so you can just go do what you want to do, which is go sell houses. So yeah. just that that clear distinction. But yeah. I agree, confusion of splits, also the illusion of choice. Oh my god, if that one's a better commission split for me, I'm going to spend all my time there. Yeah, and then I'm not taking care of the ones that we're spending money on. Right, right. So you went from so that, that model to all fifty-fifty. Yeah, and that was kind of the thing. I think that was kind yeah. of the trend, and I think a lot of people are probably still there. Was just everything's on a fifty-fifty. Yeah. Right, right. No, no right or wrong, just your experience. Right. Yeah. But the reality of that is, as you uh, excel, as you train, as mm -hmm. you learn. Mm -hmm. You, you don't put as much of a burden on our support staff. Um, right. You're able to close at a better conversion rate. And right. I do believe that you deserve a, a higher split. Yeah. So that was our, that's kind of the evolution of where we are today. So did you go incremental based on volume, based on transactions, or did you, like, what did you do? Lifetime deals, right? Because that gives us an idea of- what, what does that mean? So how many deals have you done? So 
your, your first 12 deals with mm-hmm. us, you're less than a 50, you're in a 45%. We're gonna have to spend more time, we're paying the mentor, yep. we're paying a trainer, yep. there's a yep. lot of time and energy. Yeah. After 12 until 50, you're in a 50-50. Yep. Once you've done 50 or more, you're at a 55. Mm-hmm. And then if you go over 100, you can go to 60. All right. Okay. And then we give some loyalty bonuses for time on the team. Mm-hmm. And for, so that's a 5% uh, boost after five years. Yep. And then if you wanna take on a leadership role, We'll give you another five percent boost. So you know, and it doesn't have to be exactly those things, but I yeah. think something to. But there's a but there's a career pathing element. Yes. Like I think the most important thing is okay. So I'm not just here forever, right? That's I can it. go from here to here. People, it's white belt, yellow belt, green belt, blue belt, yeah. stripe, stripe, stripe. You know, like people want to see that progression. Yeah. So so what have you found? How long ago did you implement this, and what have you found? So I think we probably did this. I would say 18 months ago now. Mm-hmm. So we've been on this for a while. Um, we're not losing top producers. We're creating that a path. Matter of fact, I think we're creating a system that's even better for, for some of these top producers, right? So way. we talk about these personal mm-hmm. deals, right? Yeah. We want to grow your personal sphere, right? We want to help you to generate those deals. So we're mm-hmm. creating the sphere for you. We do you know events and giveaways every month. So you have something to send out to your sphere. Right. We have a past client concierge who's calling that sphere. Um, these are deals that are great for you to have. We will continue right. to help you to grow it. Um, and, and then as you're getting better co- at converting, mm-hmm. I want to give those top people more right. opportunities. So right. I just want to outpace whatever you can potentially bring from your sphere. I want to make sure I'm outpacing that in, in lead. So yeah. our top people, as we build this thing out, will get more opportunities. Yeah. So I, I don't, but it's like more opportunities and they convert higher. So you, you know, you're make you're making money on the deals, yeah. even though even though their splits are different. What about what about if it's a, a classic thirty five percent referral fee deal? What yeah. happens then? We're, we're splitting that with the agents, you know. Okay. And I know a lot of teams, uh, the, the agent eats the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're splitting it, okay. Um, which which I think is a fair way to do it. Right, yeah. right. And then, very quickly, do you have any other core services that get impacted? Like I know, like in Massachusetts, like having things like title insurance or closing services because the attorneys do it, so that's hard. Yep. Mortgage? Um, so we're, we're in a MSAs for both of those because Good. they are difficult in our right. state. Right, yeah. and then what about things like home warranty? We don't do much on the home warranty. Okay. Um, we ha- we use um, whatever the big one is there, American Home Shield. Yeah, we yeah. have it, yeah. um, but it's not something that we push that much. We really encourage our agents to use it when you're in a jam. Right, you know, so right. But we don't we don't push it that much. It's good. So yeah. so I like it because it's like no, we're going to make money as a real estate brokerage. That's it, right? Yep. And that's power. So on fifteen hundred transactions, what kind of volume do you guys do, and what's the gross commission income? Yeah, so math is terrible. I know it'll be. Uh, half a billion or, or uh, a little over. Yeah. So I don't know what the commission volume is on that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is it 12? 12. 12 and a half. Yeah. In that range? That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and, and I mean, that's we're just big, getting cause, started. Because last year you did like five, right? Yeah. So like you're, you, you, you're one of these double, 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 which is. Yeah, I think it's, and it's sustainable. You yeah. know, I think these regional teams, the way that we've built this out, the training, the recruiting department really understands who we're looking for. Yeah. Um, so we're doing a better job of bringing in the right people, um, holding people accountable once they're in. So we're getting them out quicker. We yeah. used to hang on to people that probably shouldn't have been in our organization for too long because it was kind of right. like, well, she's nice. He's nice. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's time. It's time. It's <laughs> He's time. Nice, but he, she's nice, but it's time. Okay. Speaking of time, this has been awesome. We're going to have to get you back on the show. I want it like in the next like 12 to, I'm looking at my team. I want it back on the show in the, like the next 12 to 15 months. So then all of a sudden we got a couple of years of data with a new model, right? The direction. And of course, yeah. by that time you'll be doing 3000 transactions. Hopefully. That's- I got a solution for you, but I'll talk about it offline. <laughs> Everyone's going to be very teased by that. Steve, if, if somebody's got a question they want to reach out and, and connect with you, uh, what's the best way for them to talk? They can look at my name, which is Steve Ravithis. Um, it's the same on all platforms yep. uh, or just look for Rovi Holmes, R O V I Holmes. Love it, man. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you, bro. Yeah. This awesome. Is, this Thanks is, for this having me. great. Appreciate you unpacking it. So, hey, like, subscribe, share, give us some comments. Make sure that you definitely reach out to Steve. This guy's a very, very, very biology and econ like turned real estate agent. I love it. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next show. Take care. This is the time where the very best separate themselves from the rest and drive their business to the next level. This is exactly what we teach at Blueprint. It is the playbook for top agents, for people like yourself that are looking to elevate themselves out of this market and take control. It's going to be myself. 
and a bunch of top coaches and a bunch of top clients revealing their best practices so you can plug and play and grow your business. Just go to tomferry.com slash blueprint and enter the promo code blueprint15 to get 15% off your ticket price. I can't wait to see you there.